Hey there guys, this is Hal with another video, uh, just a quick little one. I know that I said I wasn't sure if I was going to um, do anything besides racing, but I'm just giving a shot. I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just kind of finding my way. But anyways, I noticed the Magnus Jump Point was on here. Uh, I've never actually seen it in person. I've seen very few clips, and so I decided it was worth going and getting to check out. And I have never actually pulled out my C1 uh, prior to recording of this video. So I decided, why not take my C1 and check out the jump point briefly and just kind of give my initial reactions and thoughts. Uh, not that I have anything maybe particular to uh, add, but yeah, just a little adventure for anybody who maybe doesn't know much about this game and is just looking for any content at all. Um, I also want to give my impressions on the C1 here. So yeah, um, thing is big. Um, it's very wide, definitely an easy target for combat, but I suppose the C1 isn't for combat. But I love the design language of this ship. Just the sleek lines, the color scheme, the lighting. They really put a lot of love and care into this ship, and I'm really excited to see what else they have in the future. Um, and so a little known fact about me is I work uh, two jobs, and one of my main jobs is uh, I'm an airplane fueler. And so I actually get to be able to witness and critique a lot of things uh, about aircrafts because I've worked in the industry for almost a decade. Um, so this is actually pretty accurate to what it would be like nowadays. This is what's a single point. Uh, basically, you would just take a hose, put it on there, you twist, and you open up the valve. And so this is definitely reminiscent of a single point. A little different, obviously. It's a game. It's, you know, way in the future. But yeah, this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a single point. Uh, my understanding is there's a fueling port up top as well. And so, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was a cool little thing that this comes out. Uh, not really much of a reason for it to come out like that. I mean, realistically, I suspect in the future, even for things like this, we would keep the same design language, which typically there's just a panel. There's a panel that opens up, uh, whether manually, electronically, and it's just there inside. Having it come out like that, uh, I feel like is asking for uh, trouble in terms of things breaking potentially or hitting. Uh, there's a little bit of damage there, I noticed. It was because, uh, you didn't see in the recording, but when this thing came in, it, like, bounced up and down. So I was like, oh, cool. Some damage. Um, I love the hazard lights, uh, that come down with that. I think that would absolutely be something that would come, uh, in the future with these type of things. Uh, we have warning lights and whatnot already on planes. Uh, and even though we don't have light up, you know, warning, uh, barriers, uh, if you know anything, and I'm sure a lot of people here are aviation nuts, you know, there are, there are safety lines, and you aren't supposed to be walking in those when a plane's taxiing and whatnot. And so I absolutely think in the future, when we have spacecraft, if you had a ramp that came down like that, I absolutely believe we would have lights that would illuminate on the ground like that. It makes sense, uh, especially because you're in space, you know, not everything's going to be painted uh, with the proper things, you know, you, you're going to have to adapt and improve. And so, yeah, I, th I thought that was a cool little touch. Um, you know, it's something, you know, I think is just very realistic. I love that you can see the internal components on this. It's not something you get in planes nowadays, really. Um, you know, unless maybe it's military, and even then, maybe not so much. I love the habitation area in this. It's the perfect size for two people. It's clean. It's compact. Uh, it's something planes could learn to do better is utilize their space. Uh, obviously... You know, airlines aren't particularly interested nor care about your comfort unless it's an international flight. And even then, you're pushing it. Really, they're, they're worried about cramming as many people as they can in there to make up for costs and to make as much profit. But I love the design language in it. Uh, another thing I wanted to test out is just how the C-1 handled. Uh, you know, it's a bigger ship. It's, you know, for all intents and purposes, bigger, at least wider than the Cutlass Black. Uh, so, you know, it's not going to fly like a light fighter, but I was really curious kind of how it felt. And you're going to see here uh, the roll, the barrel roll, not half bad. I thought it was pretty decent, uh, all things considered. It was the pitch and yaw that really got me. That's where you could feel the sluggishness. Uh, I just thought that was, um, you know, to be expected, but it doesn't, it doesn't handle bad for what it's supposed to be, which is, you know, a cargo ship. I think they did a great job with that. And uh, so, yeah. Um, also, as we get further in this video, um, you know, if you guys have any suggestions for maybe what type of content you would like to see or, you know, um, things like that, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm totally down to kind of give new, you know, sort of, um, things tries. And, uh, let me tell you what, 
I loved coming up on the uh, jump point here. Just that is such a view. Just beautiful. I can't wait to be able to just transport between galaxies here. Um, or systems, I should say. And just, you know, you need that sense of wonder. And then you get up here, and then you see, you know, the gateway, and it's just like, man, it's just beautiful. And I'm really excited for the next year when it sounds like we're going to finally have Pyro in. Um, I'm curious what your guys' uh, hopes and dreams are for Pyro. I would like to see more activities. I would like to see a lot more NPC um, to make the world feel lived in. And I would really like to see performance improvements when that comes out. I know that that's sort of probably going to be a package deal, but it's something this game sorely needs. You know, I'm running a 40 series card, and I'm lucky to get good frames. And so it's one of those things where they really need to start optimizing this game as soon as they can. Uh, I mean, I think that's a thing that deters a lot of new players away, especially ones that don't have the money to invest into a really good system or even a decent system at that. So I'll be curious to see where that goes. Um, funny enough, as I roll up here to the gates, um, or whatever you want to call them, I, I kind of realized partly in, because I actually recorded audio um, while I was making this video, and I did not like how it sounded. I didn't know what to say. But I realized as I was recording it here, I'm like, um, as I get from there, I'm like, oh, I, um, I'm in backwards. So I'm assuming, what you're seeing here, what I'm heading towards now, um, I'm assuming that it is going to be like sort of like where you enter in with that jump. And uh, yeah, I think they did a really good job with this space. It kind of feels futuristic and stuff like that. I don't know. I I'm just really excited. Um, something I think I might try to do for future videos, just to off on a note, is since I have almost a decade of airline experience, aircraft experience in many different ways, I think maybe where I want to take these videos other than racing is kind of give my input based off real life experience of current day aviation and um you know kind of give my two cents on what i think about you know how this game represents that